We are Ben and MP, and we've been completely rebuilding a sinking wooden sailboat to eventually make it our home. A lot of hard work has been put into your back, but we always make sure to have fun along the way as well. Huge turtle out there. I'm going to go and send this back up and see if I can find it. Yeah. Today, we'll be bringing our furniture to the next level, and you won't believe the trick that we used to make this detail on the doors. Subscribe to make this couple very happy and enjoy the journey with us. Not all for me. Can. We wake up a bit earlier, we stick the boards in the car and we go for a surf. It's just super nice to get into the water. So that's what we're going to do today. Speaking of surfing, I would like to really thank the sponsor of this episode, which has something to do with surfing, I guess, Surfshark, which is a VPN that I've been using for a very, very long time. VPN is a virtual private network that you can add to a mobile device like laptop or phone and it literally puts a mask on everything you're doing online, which is why it's also really good when you use it in public networks. And why would that be useful to you? Well, to me, it's useful for many things. Since I've moved to Brazil, I haven't been able to watch some of the series and movies that were available in my hometown in Belgium. But by simply activating this Surfshark VPN, Netflix would allow me to watch whatever. One more example, I'm watching the Six Nations, but I couldn't log in to the TV streaming service so I flicked it to the UK and I could watch the Rugby Six Nations. Safety of our data and whatever's on your mobile devices, also banking details, is one of our biggest concerns. So just having a VPN is so worth it. Just activate it and it kind of just puts a mask around your computer and it doesn't get out there. It doesn't get to whoever wants it. So yeah, we know firsthand, just like in the Teredo worms in our hull case, that you don't want any bad things or people intruding in your own business. So what's stopping you from just getting it? You're not losing anything. Except for the infiltrators. Just as I got in, the fin snapped off. A Rafa, you know Rafa, and his uncle is in there and I could borrow his board. Thanks, Rafa. There's a huge turtle out there. I'm gonna go and send this back up and see if I can find it. I didn't think I was going to find it. I'm so happy. Nat Geo, I'll send you my CV. Like a glove. Luckily there were no sharks out there today. But there are sharks out there trying to get your data. If you sign up now to surfshark.deals forward slash 
Sailing Yaba, you'll get 83% off and three months for free. Unlike me losing my fin in the water, you shouldn't lose out on this deal or lose your data. Anyway, quit your jibber jabber, fool. You've got a boat to build. How cool is it to think that all these pieces are coming from the old bulwark of Yaba? Guess who strikes again? Peanut butter.
though wise we've also been very busy we and i mean i would like to say a big thanks to the carpenter or cabinet builder or whatever you want to call him a son who has been very creative with doors we were very struggling with what design of door we wanted and he just kept saying i've got an idea i'll make something for you and the prototype practically looks like this except it was a prototype and this is what we came up door wise so we will have it all shut on top and then the bottom will be vented so all the cabinets will be able to breathe a bit I think this is one of my favorite parts of the interior build, which is the doors of the cupboards. They have different shapes. It was also fun to decide which cupboards are gonna have which shape, also how we're gonna let the air flow through and stuff like that. You might say that these doors are very big for a boat, that when you open it, everything is just gonna be too small, uh, let's say too big inside. However, as we start filling our boat with plates, pots, pans, equipment, they're all gonna be little subdivisions inside. Uh, we're gonna have hinges as well as something that will fix them in place when we heal over a bit. We have also decided that this tall wardrobe, which was gonna be one big door that swings open and shut, it's gonna become two doors because at the end of the day, you don't need the whole door to slide open. So the bottom one we've decided to, make, to follow the line of the rest of the furniture all the way around. So this bit's gonna be fixed. And we're gonna have a small little door underneath. And there's the big door that's over here. It's gonna be the one that comes on top. Same here, there'll be lots of shelves, subdivisions, little bits of vertical bits in front of the shelf so nothing falls off. And also we can make it all fixed, like little wine glass holders, of course. And now it's lots of sanding and fitting. Uh, you've seen how the doors are put in place. Soon you will see how the inside part of the doors is gonna be made. This is going to be see-through, kind of an Indian netting, and that one there, all those are going to be hardwood. We were wondering what's going to happen with the doors, what's going to fill that middle bit of the doors of our cabinets. We had no idea and at 10 p.m. we got a text from a Jilson, our carpenter. He showed, sent us this video of this kind of triangle piece of plywood attached to a router and you go around on a piece of wood and it makes a nice design. So we said, why not try it? And the results are absolutely amazing.
We've been saying from the beginning that our goal is to make Yaba go from wreck to dreamy. And of course, the outside and all the job that the carpenters have made made Yaba look already super dreamy. But I think that the interior and how we're gonna do the furniture is where that magic of the dreaminess is really gonna be at that you enter and you feel that it's a special place all these louvered panels and the slats and the doors how we choosing to make those things i think is where the difference will live that come from trees but of course it also comes from other boats because it was at the scrap pile so we are carrying on your back the story of many boats so those slats traveled many miles with many different captains and I think that's so cool that we can bring that little story on board of Yabatsu so I'm very happy with how things are turning out to be I really hope the final result is pleasant to the eye because individually everything is looking very nice and I don't know I'm really enjoying this process and I'm super curious to see how things will be at the end I really hope you guys are enjoying this too and yeah let's keep going because there's still so much to do until we can achieve our dreamy home. So I was packing up all of this, literally the... I was unscrewing these little knobs, putting it on the bag, the phone was already disconnected, I'm like, where's the drone? It's like, still up there. Coming. I'll show you how long it takes to get down here. I don't know if uh, Nat Geo is going to hire you with that. Uh... We really hope you enjoyed this episode. Next week, we'll be back with more progress on our haul. But before saying bye, we would like to welcome our new patrons, Fisky, Paul and Stephen. Also, thank you Antoinette for your PayPal donation. And for the super thanks, thank you so much, Indy, Wiley, Jens, Joseph, Duane, Ronald and Greg. You guys are legends. See you all next Sunday. Bye. Bye. Anyway, quit your jibber jabber, fool. You've got a boat to build. Quote that movie. Or commercial. Actually, or who was it who said it? Do you know who said it? Mr. T. In the Snickers commercial. Quit your jibber jabber, fool. Have a Snickers. Oh, I wish I had one right now.